So Alan Grayson is running for Marco Rubio's Senate seat in Florida, and the Democratic Party decided to back Patrick Murphy instead. He's a different Democrat. He's a more pro-establishment Democrat. So what did Alan Grayson do? He did what Alan Grayson always does. He took a sledgehammer and he started swinging. While you're waging this race, I guess against what the Democratic establishment, right, is, is suggesting they would like. The Politburo has decided that they're going to back Patrick, but that's irrelevant because none of them actually vote in Florida. The actual Democratic voters in Florida are strongly backing me. That's what the recent polls show. And that's understandable. I passed more amendments than any other member of Congress in the past two years. I passed more bills. More of my bills, Grayson bills, became law than any other member of Congress. I passed more of this, more of that, and in particular, more good things for people, more progressive legislation than anyone else. And Patrick, Patrick is Aaron boy for Wall Street. Why is the party backing him over you? Because they want someone who's an errand boy for Wall Street. That's the way things work now in Washington, D.C. It's a conscious decision on their part. Just as we saw people attacking Elizabeth Warren a month ago or two months ago, the party actually wants to beat down the progressive wing of the Democratic Party and instead elevate the Wall Street wing of the Democratic Party. The Democratic establishment, though, they're the ones saying, you know, he pisses people off, he's abrasive, he's, uh, you know... Uh, they want you to play nice and with other people, I guess, and they, they claim that you don't do that. They're losers, Alan. These are people who lose for a living. Look what happened last year with the Senate races. There were seven open seats. They lost six of them. All right? right. How many Republicans who were incumbents lost? Zero. How many Democrats who were incumbents lost? Six. These are losers who lose for a living. Now they're trying to screw up my race. So you, but you feel you'll win. You, you have oh, the sense. Oh, by the way, of, was that divisive? I'm really sorry. <laughs> if that was divisive. Oh, man, do I love that. Now, uh, Alan Colmes goes on there, and he doesn't mean this in a negative way or anything, but he says, well, you know, you're aggressive, kind of like Trump. Don't bring up Trump in relation to Alan Grayson, please. And again, I know you're only talking about tone-wise. Uh, Alan Colmes is a good guy. He didn't mean it with any negative connotation attached to it, but don't do that. Because there's one gigantic difference here. When Trump does what Alan Grayson just did, he's, losers, they're losers, it's not true. It's made up, it's false. He's usually saying that to somebody who just schooled him in a Twitter debate. When Alan Grayson says it, it's literal. It's literally correct. He's talking about Democrats who ran in the last election and got their asses handed to them on a silver platter. They lost. They are losers. So when he calls the Democratic establishment losers, he's calling them that because it's actually correct. It's factual to call them that. Okay, and then I love how he goes, my opponent, Aaron Boy for Wall Street. That's what he is. Aaron Boy for Wall Street. And then he says something that's 100% correct when he says, you have to understand that this is the way the Democratic Party is functioning today. This is the way they function. They want to lift up all the Democrats who will play ball. They want to give them a platform. All the Democrats who are pro-establishment, all the Democrats who are pro-Wall Street, all the Democrats who won't rock the boat, they're the ones who end up getting the positions of power. Perfect uh, example of this. Harry Reid. Why do you think it is that all the Republicans who rise through the ranks are really tough and loud and arrogant? John Boehner. This is a guy who's never said a smart thing in his life, but he's like, yeah, I'll beat the Democrats, that's what I'll do. Why is it that he was he's a leader in the Republican Party, but you have Harry Reid, who's a leader in the Democratic Party? Why is that? Well, because Harry Reid, if, if you're a Democrat, what you have to say is, oh, I'm not sure if I agree with you or disagree with you on that. I guess I'll defer to your wisdom and the wisdom of the people on Wall Street, and I guess that you guys can make the decision. So you need really aggressive right-wingers who are uh, pro-Wall Street, and really meek Democrats who aren't going to push for an actual Democratic agenda. Like really trying to raise the minimum wage and get unionization back and get money fully out of politics and get single-payer health care and do all the things that progressives really want. So you need weak Democrats that will buckle and aggressive Republicans that won't. Which is exactly why you see the breakdown in party leadership the way it is. Alan Grayson is trying to break that mold. Alan Grayson is saying, I don't fuck you and your Democratic Party money. I don't need it because I know you guys aren't even on the right side, really. Okay, you're center-right pro-establishment sellouts is what you are. 
I'm going to run, I'm going to win, I'm going to beat the establishment Democrat, and I'm going to win because the people are with me. You have to understand, in the last election, when the Dem it was a bloodbath for the Democrats. A bloodbath across the board. You know who won by double digits? Alan Grayson. You want to know why? He didn't back down. He actually argued for a progressive message, and you couldn't beat him in that argument because he was right, <laughs> and then he ended up winning. Meanwhile, compare that with all the Democrats who lost. Uh, what's Allison Lundergan Grimes, her, her name from Kentucky? She ran against Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell was polling horribly in his home state. Nobody liked him. Nobody liked him. They voted for Turtle Boy over Allison Lundergan Grimes. Why? Because she didn't rep the brand. She didn't say, I'm a liberal, here's what I'm in favor of, this is what you want to, vote for me. She played a Republican light and made it so obvious. She wouldn't even say when she was asked in a press conference, did you vote for Obama? She wouldn't even answer. She did, she did uh, ads where she's shooting a gun. Why? Aren't you the Democrat? Why are you trying to play these goofy Republican games where like, oh, look at my image, I'm really Christian too. <laughs> Why are you trying to do that? Why not be real with people? Why not tell them what progressive policies you're in favor of and tell them how it'll make their lives better? You can't do it because you bought into the Republican, the Democratic establishment bullshit game. Where they say, the way to win is always to go to the center. The way to win is always be more pro-establishment. The way to win is always to acquiesce to Wall Street. Well, it turns out the people themselves do not like that. And Alan Grayson knows that. Which is why now he's running for Marco Rubio's Senate seat. And he's swinging his fucking sledgehammer. Well, Alan, here's my advice to you. Swing away.